we're at the last message on the book of Ruth. And for me, I don't know why it is, but every time I come to the end of a series, I don't want to end it because it's been so powerful being able to just immerse ourselves in this book. Today, I've asked Pastor John to jump in with us and he's going to just help have this conversation about everything we've learned and just bring it all together into a, a, a nice concluding package today. Next week, we're going to jump into the study of the book of First Peter. This has been our plan all along, and we're excited to jump back into that next week. So if you want to be reading ahead, you can study the book of First Peter, and um, studying the Bible is what we do here. So let me jump right into the book of uh, Ruth. Pastor John, um, help, us, help us make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, church. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for joining us online. We love you. We miss you. Um, as we're concluding in the book of Ruth, I had the opportunity this week just to spend some time with the Lord in yeah, reflection yeah, we did. of what Pastor Lee has been talking about this past series and just the wonderful series it, it was and how relevant it's been <laughs> Who for guessed? what's going on. And one of the things I just think is so beautiful about the story of Ruth is it's such a story of God's uh, providence. It's such a story of God's protection. I mean, if you think about the book of Ruth, Ruth starts with a funeral. It starts with, with a death of a loved one and it ends with a wedding. It's this beautiful story of God's faithfulness. And it's really marked by multiple people in the story that make different decisions at different times. And yet God is faithful to all of them. Talk and about a time in our lives where we're having to all make decisions. And, and different situations yeah. that we find ourselves in. Right now, as you're watching this, um, you're kind of joining into the church family from very different situations, very different things that have happened this past week. We know that a lot of you have been struggling um, financially with, with job layoffs. We know a lot of people have been struggling with fear of just the unknown, struggling with just entertaining your children. And so <laughs> we, we look at the book of Ruth and we remember that in the story of Ruth, God is faithful. So just kind of highlight some of these things, these beautiful cycle of God's um, sovereignty and grace through the book of Ruth. We see a barrenness woman give birth. Can't have children. Absolutely. We see a widow, right? Have a marriage. We see... Um, Bitter, angry feelings towards God turn towards sweet worship towards him. We see uh, idolatry torn, turn into worship. We see devastation that God redeems. And so th th that's the pattern that we see all throughout. And the that story of redemption, whatever the script is, Absolutely. is powerful. Absolutely. And, and, and this stage in our church and in, in our lives, one of the things that I, th I feel is so important for us just to receive this morning. And so if you're looking um, at this through maybe your living room and, and you're with your family, um, if you're with your students right now, your children, I would love for us to just take a moment to just remind ourselves that God is a God we can trust. And so if everything in our lives go the way we want to go, we can trust God. If everything in our life goes the way we don't think it should go, we can trust God. And so in the story of Ruth, in the book of Ruth, we see that despite our conditions, despite our circumstances, we can trust God no matter what. And one of the things I wanted to point out that I thought Pastor Lee did a great job throughout the series to, to look at the responses of these people in the, in the book of Ruth and how they really turned to God. And I'd like to use a, a phrase here that they, they, they healed up. So, so when they were going through their trials, they looked to God, they ran towards his word, they ran towards his people to allow for that time to be a time of, of ministry, the time of healing. And so, so let, let me, let me do absolutely. this while you're going through this subject of trusting God, would you on the right hand side there of your screen, type in what you're trusting God for right yeah. now. Just type that in there all over the church. Just type it in. Fun thing with this is we normally don't get the opportunity to go back and forth. You can right now. So just type in what you're trusting God for right now. Absolutely. I'd like so to read just a, keep on going. Yes. I'd like to read a scripture verse as you're doing that. Thanks for doing that. As I know as pastors, we love to hear where you are to join you in that prayer. Um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 says this. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases their strength. Even you shall faint and be weary and young men shall be exhausted, but they will wait but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strengths. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall not, they shall walk and not grow faint. And so Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, the prophet's just reminding us of who God is. That despite everything that's happening in this world, God is not changing. He's the same God today as tomorrow. And man, throughout the book of Ruth, you see the steadfast love, the steadfast faith that we can cling to, that we can hold on to during this promise. Well, and you see in that Isaiah passage right there how they go from being really torn down to actually building up strength. So this is a really important time in our lives to grow in strength because we're growing in the Lord. And I know a lot of you have spent time in your Bible in this time, unlike you have any other time, because it really draws us back to the Lord and the things that matter. And and then we do build up that strength. Yeah, what a gift it is to have time to spend with the Lord. Um, and I've, I've enjoyed that time yeah. personally and, and even in some prayers and, and Bible studies that we've been doing together as a church online. What a great time to spend yeah. with the Lord. You know, I'm reminded this season, I've been outside in our backyard with, with my daughters and, and even despite the fears of this world, you see new life happening. You know, mm. I look at my garden and yeah. I think, hey, this is time to kind of think through uh, the winter's past and the spring is coming. And yeah. I love as I've cleaned my garden beds just to see the new life about to happen. And it just reminds me the beautiful pattern that God has built into this world. You know, there is, there is life after death. Yes. And, and it's not just physical death, but God has wired this pattern of, yeah, when, when dark times come, when you're in that dark Winter. valley, absolutely, <laughs> there is spring, right? Yes. So just looking around, it's just a comfort to me during this time to say, God, you are faithful. And look at how you make new out of something that looks like it's done. And so I also think about, um, I was reading, and everyone's kind of reading right now about diseases and health and how we go, how we're t- attacking this. And um, I actually came across this article, and I'm, I might say it wrong, but a, a apoptosis, which is kind of a medical term. And what I loved about when I saw this was it's kind of, um, it's, it's a term for programmed cell death. And what this meant, and I just love this, was that your body is programmed so that your, your cells die in order to have new cells, in order to have health and, and new life. And, and, and even in our DNA, there's this pattern of when we submit to the Lord and we understand that through brokenness, there is new life, um, that truth is wired both in the nature and even in, in our anatomy. Yeah. And I, I love that God has wired that into our patterns of, of our lives because as we see in the book of Ruth, there, there's these two amazing things that we see really all throughout the Bible, that there's an age of promises that God has given us his promises and he's true to those promises. And then in scripture, as we look into the, the gospels, there's an age of fulfillment that God is faithful in fulfilling his promises. Mm. And that's true even today. And that as you study the word, you see both an age of promise and an age of fulfillment. And as believers, we can rest on a God who does both. And so as I was looking through um, this book, one of the things I I love about um, God's promises is really in the book of Ruth, we see God's promises in the line of David, right? In the line of Jesus and how in the midst of people's decisions, God was continuing to work his promises out through imperfect people. And so I'm reminded also in in the fulfillment, as you look at the King Jesus, where even in the book of Isaiah that we just read, that Mm -hmm. that Jesus was to come in the midst of some dark valleys that the church has gone through um, over the years. We are reminded that he came, he was victorious, and he's coming back. Amen. Um, Pastor Lee, I just did this live stream with our students um, recently, and we talked about the coming of Christ and how in the midst of this time, we can be so encouraged that Jesus is coming back that's victorious. Right. Amen. And that's any day. And that's we right. as a church can have that hope despite um, kind of our horizontal physical limitations or even the relationships right now that are looking differently. We can trust and hope in the coming. And isn't it Jesus. interesting how just a few weeks ago, that wasn't top of mind. Right. And through difficult times, through these kinds of times we're reminded of, and yet the scripture reminds us to constantly be saying, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, to constantly be looking for the return of Jesus. So this is an awesome reset to remind us to get our eyes back on Jesus, which it's one thing technically when we know that's the case. It's another thing when all of a sudden that's a real hardwired thing into how we are really feeling. And I know that many of us are feeling that way right now in our lives. I'm thankful for that because that's where Jesus wants us to have our eyes on him. Amen. And if you guys have your Bibles or maybe your phone, I'll pull them out. In the book of Matthew chapter one, um, you really see this, this foreigner, this Ruth mentioned mm. kind of one other time in the New Testament. And, and in this, they mentioned the unwed Mary, mm-hmm. uh, the prostitute Tamar, the adulteress Bathsheba, and, and how 
on all four of these women, the genealogy of Jesus Christ was carried. And First how, five verses of Matthew. Absolutely. And how it's an amazing reminder of his faithfulness. And man, what an encouragement to know that in, in the scriptures that God used these types of people, these people that maybe never made right decisions until they met Jesus. That's right. And yet, <clears throat> despite their past, God was faithful to redeem them and use him, use them to really rescue humanity through their line. And so what a beautiful reminder in scripture in Matthew 1 of how we see Ruth is, is included in this list of women in which the genealogy of Christ was fulfilled. And you can imagine Ruth. I mean, when she had to go out gleaning on that field that day, there probably had to be this script running in her head. This is it. This is yeah. over. I mean, I don't know if we're going to survive. I don't know if we're going to make it through this. Things have gotten so dark. And then to see so many years later on the front page of the New Testament, mm -hmm. there she is. And, and, and even um, her son mentioned, how cool is that? That's and we true. sometimes think, this is it. This is it. I, I don't know. And I think we go dark on that as opposed to going, wait a minute, God's got a plan and, he, and he's working it out. And he's even working it out through you and me right now. Absolutely. And God is greater than any past. Amen. And so as you join us, maybe you're new to yeah. our church. Uh, thank you for joining us. We want to let you know you are welcome here. Yeah. And, and we're, a, we're a church that believes that despite where you come from, there is a God who wants to meet you that loves you and wants to rescue you. And that's why we love the book of Ruth because it's a rescue story. Yep. And, and all these characters that I'd like to just kind of highlight here that we studied about, all of these people, God moved them from really a, a life that was without him to a life redeemed. Mm -hmm. and, and it was all different types of situations and all different types of responses. But yet the common core here is that our God is a God who rescues. And, and I, I, in my own life, I, I, I often think about it the same way as the story is Ruth of there used to be this old John before mm -hmm. Jesus rescued me. And, and that John had different desires, different yeah. fears. Certainly during this time, he would have thought differently. But this new John who's been born again in the spirit, I, I now have a new hope that I've moved from guilt and shame that kind of marked my past or maybe fear and anxiety to now hope and joy in Jesus. And that's where I rest. And that's where I live. And as we look at the story of Ruth, God is the hero of that story. In fact, God is the hero of this entire Bible. It's about God. It's about his goodness and his glory. And for us as believers, he is the hero of the story, of our story, of this world, that this is not our home. And we can rejoice that God is the hero and that does not change. And so I would just love to take a couple minutes to look at the story of Ruth and, and really look at the characters of the story. So again, if you have your Bible or maybe your cell phone, just turn to the book of Ruth. And we would like to just kind of highlight a couple of these characters and see how God brought them from death to life mm. and how he was faithful. And despite maybe some situations that are happening in their world, um, some good, some bad. Um, and I love the contrast between some of the characters and how they were watchful for God and some had to learn how to be watchful for God. So the first one I just wanted to talk through was Naomi. I know we talked about Naomi and how Naomi really in the beginning of Ruth was really bitter about her life. As we study the word, she was really trying to blame God for some of the situations that she was going through. But yet, Well, and you God, see a woman who was on one trajectory. Right. I mean, life was in automatic. It, it, she knew where it was going to lead. And even when they moved to Moab, in her mind, it's, we're just bettering ourselves. Yep. And then nothing happens the way she had scripted it out. Yep. And so that's, that's this woman then when she comes back being bitter. And, and can't we connect with that? Oh my, right? Especially so right like now. Right now. Right so, now. So the plans in our lives the future plans or what we assume would be tomorrow <laughs> isn't the case anymore. You and I were just talking before we went on the camera. We've been, we don't even know how to plan for the future of right. um, Calvary, of church, of, of sermon series, of like? worship, because every week it's all brand new again. But your life is just like that. Her life was right, like, just like that. She went down the path of being bitter about it. But at the end of the day, some things would massively change where God would show himself. Despite how she responded, God would show her, himself to her. And I believe something must have been going on in her life that did have a focus on God. Because when Ruth eventually says, your God will be my God. 
Evidently, Ruth saw something in Naomi. There had been something said, maybe something taught in the family at, at some point where she realized what Naomi's um, anchor was. I, I think sometimes, yeah, we might be in a rough spot right now. We may be a little dark at the moment. We may not be quite dialing it in, but we know, you know what the anchor is. I have a feeling that was Naomi. Absolutely. And, and what I love about Naomi was despite the fact that her future changed, um, she eventually, she eventually yeah. ran towards God and his people. Yeah. And man, what an opportunity right now to be the church. That people in the midst of their future plans being broken. Yeah. You know, it could be as simple as, hey, we wanted to go to Disney World and we can't go <laughs> right now. Or, hey, I thought this was going to be my life and it looks like it's changing. Yeah. The response that Naomi lays in front of us as, as godly people as we study the word is, as she changes her course and moves towards God's provision and God's people, her life changes, that God shows up and God is faithful. That's right. And, and that's so comforting because, man, I, sometimes I struggle. God, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you allowing these things to happen? And then I'm reminded of God's faithfulness. And what do you want me to do? I mean, how am I supposed to jump in on this? I mean, right. I, I, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and all throughout, all throughout this um, series, we, we looked at the, the story of Ruth and we really focused in on Ruth. But one of the characters that we kind of highlighted that I just wanted to highlight right now which is so encouraging because I think a lot of us are this person right now is Boaz. Yeah, and, and we what, can be this person anyhow. We need to be. Absolutely, or, or we're challenged to be. And one of the things I had a conversation with in one of my small groups uh, a couple weeks back was how Boaz not only met Ruth because he was a generous person mm -hmm. and he planned to have God use his generosity for, for his will, Boaz was somebody who was intentional with that. That's he was right. looking for opportunities to meet needs. And not only that, when Boaz saw Ruth, he knew about her. He knew her backstory. And so not only was he intentional with using what God has given him for others, to bless others, he was also invested in people. Like proactive in that. Absolutely. He cared for people. And church, right now, we need to care for people. Yeah. We need to look at people and say, people are, are more important than program right now. Amen. People are more important than the things that maybe we, we worshiped as a church that were false gods, as Pastor Lee mentioned. And so Boaz had this beautiful picture of what we are trying to inspire to be as believers. And Pastor Lee, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the idea that really there are these four characteristics that Boaz showed us that, that really, I think, are, are a great summary to how do we apply this this series to our lives. And the first one we talked about was rejecting passivity, that Boaz was not a passive person when it comes to God's will and, and what God wanted in his life, um, that he was aggressive towards understanding that all that he had was for the Lord. Mm. And by, by doing that, God was faithful to not only bless others with his life, but also to really bless him, to allow for God to use it is open heart to not only restore some of these other people's lives like Ruth and Boaz, but also provide for him. Yeah. And so what a testimony to us right now to say, what does that look like to reject passivity in your life right now? What does that look like in your home? And I know you, we've been challenging to say, and, and it's been challenging to me in my home. Hey, what an opportunity with my children and my family, this time that I have to use it, to build our relationship, to build our home so that our family can be about the Lord. Well, and I thought about Boaz. One of the things I thought when we were talking about Boaz originally, and this was before all that we're going through, we were going through, is that Boaz stayed in Bethlehem during the famine. Yeah. He didn't leave. Elimelech and his family had left. Boaz stayed. And when the famine's over, it was interesting to see everything was okay. I mean, I imagine there was a lot of catch up and I imagine he had to deal with a bunch of stuff, but it wasn't like this guy was destroyed forever. And what I see when he's leaving food at the corners of his field and the food for the gleaners to come through and get, is this was a guy that was just saying, okay, God said I need to leave the corners of my field open so that there can be people that are of need that can get from it. And because of his obeying God, 
the right things happen. In fact, he gets on the pages of scripture. He becomes a picture of Jesus. And I remember we said at the time, I want to be a Boaz. That's why we all collected yeah. peanut butter and diapers. We yep. all said, I want to be a Boaz. Yeah. Well, it was one thing then to collect peanut butter and diapers. We all had jobs at that moment. We all had some extra right. dollars. We all could go into grocery store shelves that were full. It would only be like a week, week and a half after we went onto those wow. full grocery store shelves that those same shelves would be empty. And not because we emptied peanut butter off of them, but because we were in a trouble. And this guy, he made it through those times. I just want to encourage you today. We can make it through those times. And this guy, when these times are over, he becomes a, a type of, a picture of Jesus. And we become a picture of Jesus in this time. You'll get through it. Be a Boaz during this time. We said that at the time, but I don't think it meant nearly as much. We thought, well, if I buy some peanut butter and diapers, maybe give some money to some needy people. I mean, now all of a sudden it's our lifestyle. And it is or it isn't, like you're saying, is are we going to get passive about that and go, I don't know, check out, someone else will do it. The government's right. got this. Right. I don't know how they've got it. It's going to take us in our neighborhood and the people we can influence. And when the world needs hope, which they do, man, the church should be yeah. loud. Jesus followers. We should be loud, right, in yeah. this moment. And I love that that Boaz was a person who expected God to show up and expected God's reward. And so I love the fact that um, when, when Boaz thought through his life, he thought through it in light of eternity. Yeah. That the false gods that Pastor Lee talked about, yeah. these false gods that we didn't even know about till now, you know, the sports season ending, the school ending, all of a sudden we think, what are we chasing right now? What, was, what got us up during the, the, the morning and, and gave us value and purpose? Right now, Jesus is loud. Mm. We need to make sure that we... Everyone's church, thinking about him. Everyone's absolutely. wondering, is there a God? Um, how do I interact with yeah. him? And, yep. and we get to demonstrate that. It's amazing. And I love that Boaz was a man who accepted responsibility. Yeah. I think that is, um, that is so key, especially when we talk about um, owning who we are, owning yeah. our actions and our attitude, even during this time, uh, that, that this time, for me, reveals, do I have selfishness in me? Yeah. Do I go to the grocery store... And I worry that there's too many people taking the things that I need. Or do I have a heart for <laughs> generosity? Do I have a heart to say, hey, right now, I may have little, but I'm going to be generous <laughs> with the little I have. Man, this is the time that God's going to say, hey, I want to see your heart. Yeah. Here. Not when you have plenty, yeah. <laughs> but when you're trying to scrape yeah. or when you're trying to um, take things for yourself. Do you have a heart to love? And lastly, I think he led. Mm. He led courageously. And man, we need leaders as a church right now. We need leaders because the church itself, the staff is made to equip the saints for the work of yeah. ministry. We need you to do ministry. Yeah. As Pastor Lee shared, that we need you to take the opportunity to meet the needs of our people and the people in your neighborhood. In neighborhood. And so we want to invite you to be like Boaz, lead courageously, be intentional to lead in your family, in your home. I, I want to say, I want to read something from Ephesians 4 as we wrap up. Ephesians 4 chapter 1, it says this, uh, Paul says, I therefore am a prisoner for the Lord. And he urges us to walk in a manner worthy of our calling to which you have been called. He says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And then he wraps up by saying this, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to be one hope that belongs to your call. Oh Lord, one faith, one baptism. Man, what a reminder that we are the hope mm. and that we are the body. And that in this time, and as we can lead and be Boaz's mm. in our families and in our homes and in our community, what a testimony of God's faithfulness we can have uh, in our lives and also to the lives of others. And so, Pastor Lee, um, those are just some of my yeah. thoughts. Thank you for One hope, us. one Lord. You've said it so well, Pastor John. And I speak for both of us when I say this. We love you. We miss you. <laughs> it's, yeah. um, it's crazy. We, we do, and we pray for you. And we thank you for staying connected in your groups for staying close to the Lord in your own personal life, for calling your family and leading your family with boldness to follow Jesus, for reaching out and caring for your neighbors, and for the way you've been reaching out, just clicking that button on the website saying, I, I want to help someone. We love you. We thank you. We pray that you just have a wonderful week. Pastor John, will you close in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Father, we thank you, Lord, all throughout um, our homes. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who is the same today, 
as you were last month, as you were this week and for next week. We thank you for the story of Ruth. That is a beautiful story of redemption. Lord, right now we need you. We need to be reminded that you are victorious, that Christ is coming back and that the church is called to be a light and a hope in a world that maybe is questioning where to go next. Lord, we thank you for those in this church that are, that are being obedient, that are walking towards you, looking for opportunities. And Lord, we pray for some that are struggling right now. Lord, come alongside of them. Come alongside of our Please brothers Lord. and sisters Please with Lord. your spirit, of your peace yes, Lord. Um, and your comfort, Lord. Um, let us rest upon you with our worries. Thank Lord, you. take our anxieties and replace them with hope. And Lord, we love you and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.